Welcome to the My Creative Days podcast, where we will talk about all things DIY, home decor, decorating tips, and creating a beautiful home on a budget. I am hoping our time together will spark a creative idea, help you plan your next DIY, or inspire you to finally tackle that project you keep putting off. Grab your favorite cup of motivation and let's chat. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, I have another mini course um, to talk about. Uh, so if you, if this is the first podcast that you're listening to, I have uh, put together mini courses for furniture flippers. So I know I have a lot of podcast listeners that are furniture flippers. You may have found my content on my website or my course, or I do have a private furniture flipping community. Um, where I'm coaching flippers uh, every month about um, how to grow their business and you know how to use social media and all the things. And so you may have found some of my furniture flipping content, you know, on, like I said, on my website or or elsewhere. Um, and I know I have a lot of podcast listeners that are furniture flippers, and I have shared a lot of content here on the podcast about flipping furniture. Um, and so I created a very like a all-encompassing a uh, course for furniture flippers. But I also narrowed some things down and some topics down for furniture flippers into mini courses. And so I am sharing those different mini courses here on the podcast um, just because, number one, I've never talked about them, so I, I want to get um, here on the podcast. So I want to you know, spread the word about them. I want to get them out. I want to help as many flippers as I can. Um, I wasted a lot of time, a lot of years trying to figure out how to do this successfully. And so I put everything that I've learned into these mini courses that will get you there a lot faster and more successfully. Um, and so uh, I really wanted to kind of go through each mini course in a separate podcast to kind of um, share with what share what each course has and um, and then hopefully if um, it sounds like something that you know somebody you know a friend or a family member could use please share this share this podcast with them because um, like I said I just want to get the word out to as many people as I can and help as many um, furniture flippers as I can so today today's mini course is all about finding pieces that are worth flipping now this is a topic <laughs> that um, I'm pretty um, that I'm pretty passionate about, and I know that um, some people will do things a little differently. Uh, but um, I have found that the be- there is the best outcome and the best makeovers um, are definitely you know it, it it is all in finding the right pieces, and so. When I was creating these mini courses, I definitely wanted to hone in and focus on the questions that I get asked the most. And so one of those is always still is finding pieces that are worth flipping. I don't know which pieces to pick up. Um, I do see potential in pieces when I see them, you know, at a yard sale or th- a thrift store, but I don't know if I should pick them up and flip them. Are they good for flipping? And so I created an entire mini course just about the finding the right pieces um, that are worth flipping and where you can make money on the other end. And so um, it's important. And one of the things that you will learn when you, you're flipping furniture is you will find, you know, you will be able to walk in. The more you do it, you will be able to walk into a thrift store or you know, an estate sale or whatever, and know from across the room if a piece is worth, if it's a good piece to flip. Um, I, you know, there are still a couple of pieces that I will run into that I've never seen before and I have to get a closer look. But the more and more you do this, the easier it gets. But I'm going to tell you, <laughs> there is a process for making sure that you are picking up the pieces that are going to make you the most money and that are worth um you know, flipping. So there's definitely a process that you don't want to, again, learn the hard way. When I first started out, I was picking up anything and everything. Like what? I can just slap some paint on that thing and I'll sell it. Um, not so true. Not so true. So you definitely want to follow a process and, and do it the right way so that you are successful with every flip and making the most money with every flip. So inside this course, you will learn the value of different pieces. So every piece is going to be worth a different amount of money. So, you know, a small end table is not going to bring in as much money as maybe a buffet 
um, you know, a small end table or a coffee table is not going to bring in as much money as a hutch. Um, so there are different values for different pieces. And so I talk about all of that inside this mini course. Um, I talk about where to find pieces. Uh, and some of these places you may not have thought about, um, but there are definitely, you know, there's always ways and places to find pieces. Um, I hear that a lot. I don't know where to find. I don't even know where to look, where to start to find pieces to flip. So I do talk about that inside the mini course. Another thing that I hear a lot um, of people ask or or comment on or over the years and still now um, is what do I need to avoid? <laughs> like if I saw, you know, this, should I not pick that up? Or people will send me photos from a thrift store that they're in. Um, I noticed this, should I not pick it up? Um, I get those a lot. And so um, I added that inside this mini course because Yes, there are things that you need to avoid picking up. Still today, I've been doing this for over 20 years. And our, Matt and I, he loves to do it as much as I do. We just love projects. And so our skill level has definitely obviously grown, right? So there are things that we could pick up that maybe a beginner would never, like I would tell you to never pick up. But just within like this last month, we were actually at our local restore and I found the best piece. It was like a smaller piece. I just love smaller pieces because we have a smaller home. And... um. <clears throat> We thought we had given it a great look over. There were definitely issues, but they were all things we could we could fix. Like we weren't worried about it. And so we went to get the cart um, and we were taking the drawers out so it would fit better in the cart while we, while we were still shopping. And as we were picking up like the body of the piece um, to put it in the cart, we started noticing there was a lot more involved that at the in the end, definitely it would have been something we could have fixed. But in the end, it was going to be a lot more than what the piece was worth when we got it done. Does that make sense? And so there are definitely things that you have to, you have to have, you know, you have to have your blinders on. You have to know what to avoid. You have to know what to look for. And you have to be willing to walk away when it's not the perfect fit. Because otherwise you're wasting time, money, and and, and energy. And you're not going to see the results on the end, on the other end. So you definitely need, there are certain things that you need to avoid. And then another thing that I thought I would add, so it's so funny, and this usually comes up when I'm sharing more like yard sailing and like when I'm out, you know, picking up pieces that uh, maybe not in a store, but it's how to haggle pricing. So yes, you should. So people will ask me, so do you ask for less or do you, you know, what, how do you get pieces for the best price? And, you know, the less you spend on the you know, finding the pieces, the more money you make at the end. Yes, yes, yes. And so I talk about haggling and um, on the prices of things and, you know, when you should and when you shouldn't and how to do it. Um, so there's definitely, yes, there's a time and a place for that. And yes, you want to spend the least amount of money at the front so then you can reap the benefits and the more money on the end. And so there are different ways to do that and haggling and and the, you know, asking for a cheaper price is always is always a good thing if you're doing it right. So I added all of that inside this mini course, which is, um, I just titled it Finding Pieces Worth Flipping because I get a lot of different questions that kind of fall into that. Like, how do I know which pieces to pick up? How do I know where I should pick these pieces up? Where do I look? Where's the best place to find them? Do I need to avoid certain things? <laughs> like I get those questions. Should I avoid this if the leg is missing? Or should I avoid this if the drawer, you know, the bottom of the drawer is missing? Or um, And then how do I haggle to get the best price? Should I be doing that? Should I not be doing that? So I added all of that inside this uh, mini course. Um, so I have been saying we are giving the podcast listeners a coupon code for these mini courses that I'm talking about. So make sure you check the show notes for that coupon code and please share this podcast with anybody, family, friends that you know that is interested in doing this, wants to scale or grow what they've already started, wants to earn more money, please share this with them. Um, I just want to, like I said, get this out to as many people as I can. And you sharing it, um, it, it is the easiest way for you to um, support that cause and just help me get in front of um, furniture flippers who who need the help and who 
need a little bit of guidance just to make the most out of what they're trying to do. So I will talk to you guys very soon. I hope you have a great day. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm grateful that you tune in every week and that you share the show with your family and friends. I love having creative chit chats with you. And my hope is that this podcast will inspire you to try a new project, start a DIY that you've been putting off and decorate your home exactly how you want it. There are a few ways you can help us with the podcast. Follow the podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you could take a few minutes to leave the podcast a review, that would help us so, so much. Again, thank you for being here. And I look forward to our chat next week. Bye-bye.